interact with people uh, again. It's a relief. Sorry for those who are uh, online. You're, you're nice people too, but. Uh, it's... Second reason is uh, I'm uh, very pleased to present this uh, work we did with uh, Alice and that we posted uh, uh, this very morning uh, on the archive. So it's uh, fresh news. And the third uh, reason, and I'm honored to be uh, here to celebrate uh, Jean's birthday. So I will not make the, uh, you know, the history of how I met Jean. I think uh, I was teaching assistant at the Ecole Normale or the list of things I owe him. You know, this is too long. But yesterday I was uh, thinking of uh, one sentence that uh, would uh, qualify Jean. And uh, the one that came Im immediately to my mind was in French, il a la classe. Uh, so I don't know the, the English for that. It's got style. So Jean, uh, a la classe, uh, physically as a person, of course, but also in his uh, human relationship in the community. Uh, I think uh, everybody can testify of that. But also, il a la classe, his uh, mathematics. So as uh, Gregory was saying, when you open one of Jean's articles, you know, everything is there, nothing is missing, but there is exactly what you, what you need to understand. Nothing more, but what is necessary. So, il a la classe. Uh, so, today, uh, I'm going to talk about parking on random trees and the frozen air d'Ochrini and the characters that will appear in these talks should be, I hope, close to uh, Jean's heart. So uh, we will see cars trying to park on trees. And this will uh, uh, involve uh, random trees and the, the scaling limit of random trees, the CRT, the continuum random tree. This was also perhaps a bit uh, stunning here, uh, involved the uh, erdos random graph. We will see stable process. Can you? I don't like seeing me here. Can you? Yeah, there is already a guy here, not maybe this one, if you can. Ah, okay. So I will try to, okay. And then uh, we will see uh, new uh, random trees appearing, these gross fragmentation trees that uh, Jean introduced a couple of years ago. And uh, if time permits, also uh, some uh, planar maps. So Jean uh, has uh, considered parking in his, uh, in his career. But uh, he was not trying to park cars, but rather bigger stuff like uh, caravans. And, uh, and when dealing with uh, random trees, uh, Jean was not this uh, green uh, ecologist or botanist because he was just trying to, ah, oh, no, okay, one, yes. Because he was uh, burning the, the trees. And so this is one of the, my favorite title, uh, uh, of uh, Jean's paper, but one off because the, my most favorite is really this one, burning cars in a parking lot because you have already trees, already uh, cars uh, and already parking, but in the wrong order. Okay, so enough for serious thing. Now let's uh, do some, uh, some fun. So what is the model? The model is parking on a random tree. So the tree, think of it as being fixed for the moment. And I'm just describing what is the uh, procedure to park cars on a tree. So the tree is your parking lot. So you imagine that your parking lot has this, this tree structure with one exit here at the bottom, which is the root of the tree. And all edges are oriented towards this exit spot. Okay? So this is your parking spot, is your parking lot. And Every spot here is a parking place. Every vertex can accommodate at most one car. Then you imagine that cars arrive sequentially on, uh, on your tree. So there are number here, one up to nine. Okay, and you will park the cars in the most obvious fashion. As they arrive, they park on the spot, unless the spot is taken, in which case they follow the oriented edges until they find an empty spot. So let's see. So the first car arrives, park on this empty spot. It's all, all done. Car number two arrives on this spot here. It's empty. Did it work? Yes. Uh, there is a bit of a lag. Sorry. Maybe I should use the, the keys. It's probably better. But to spoil all my effects. So car number two arrives, parks here. Then car number three arrives on the spot in which one is already parked. 
So the car number three will follow the first edge until it parks on the next node. Okay. Car number four arrives on the same spot uh, as number two, so follows the edge and parks at the root. Car number five arrives, three spots, six, seven, eight arrives on car on the same spot as car number two, so it will follow the edges. And since the root is already occupied, then the poor car number eight cannot park and exits the tree without parking. Okay. The same uh, faith happens with car number nine, follows all the edges all the way to the bottom of the tree and exits. Is the model clear? So, so far, I've not told you what is the model for the random tree and the model for the car arrivals. So, the model we will take is probably the simplest. For the parking lot, we will take a, a random rooted scaly tree of size n. So it's a, un, it, it is a rooted, so one vertex has been distinguished. You see here in black. And it's uh, uh, unoriented, but uh, all the vertices are labeled by one up to n. Okay? Oui? Better. Where was I? Okay, so that's uh, for the the model of the random tree. So the you pick one uniformly at random among the n to the n minus one possibilities, and then once you sample the tree, you let the cars arrive sequentially iid on the vertices uniformly at random. So each car pick one of the uh, uh, node labeled from one up to n uniformly at random and tries to park there, okay? And our goal, it's really not working, sorry. Our goal is to understand a phase transition for this process, because as we will see, when there are very few cars arriving, they will all manage to park roughly. And then when, when the density of car is too high, then uh, something happens. So let me first uh, state the theorem that was uh, proved by Lackner and Panolzer a couple of years ago when they introduced this model. So we'll see that there is a phase transition depending on the density, the density, the critical density here is a half. So more precisely, on a tree of size n, when, when you let m car arrive and m is alpha times n, then if alpha is strictly less than one half, then roughly speaking, as n is very large, you will manage to park all the cars. Roughly speaking, meaning that the number of cars that do not manage to park, this D and M, is tight and converge uh, as N goes to uh, infinity towards a finite limit law. And the supercritical case, when alpha is strictly bigger than one half, then there is a positive fraction of car that do not manage to park, meaning that you have an outgoing flux of car, which is linear in N, this C times N. Okay? So since this pioneer uh, work. There have been a lot of development uh, on this model and variations. So let me uh, state a couple of uh, papers here. Jones, Christina, and uh, Michael Prishkuki, uh, Christina and Chen, uh, Olivier and myself, Alice, who's sitting over there, Bal, Barnett, Jungo, and so on. Okay, but I, I will focus on this uh, particular model in this talk. So let me illustrate this with the simulation. So here is a simulation of a uniform Kelly tree of size 2000. So I've not displayed the label of the vertices and I will let the car arrive one by one sequentially. These are those black dots that you will see appearing. And let me launch the simulation. Does it work? Yes. So you see the car arriving one by one and when they do not manage to park on their arrival vertex, then they follow some edges and you see in uh, orange those edges which have some flux of cars that, that have been, uh, 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 you know, cars that have been going through uh, those edges. So you see that when you are subcritical, when, so what is the criticality of, sorry, my mistake, no, again. Will I manage to? Yes, sorry. So as long as uh, M is less than half times n, you will see that there is no major conflict that uh, all cars manage to park and that the parked clusters, so those orange clusters, remain small. 
but you will see that suddenly around the critical point, which is at M is equal to 1000, those critical clusters become big. And uh, you'll see that uh, the flux at the root will uh, increase a lot. So pay attention. It's, it's now. This is the critical window. And now you see some flux appearing at the root vertex, which is uh, this red dot over there. Questions? No? No. Uh, C is uh, related to the size of the giant. So I guess we can compute it, but we did not. It's a very interesting question. So the Alice uh, in her paper linked the C to the size of the giant, but uh, the C is, uh, is something that you can compute on the limit, but it's not an exact formula with uh, so far, unless uh, I'm mistaken. So let me give you some snapshot because the video was going probably too fast. So this is a snapshot of what you see in the sub-critical regime. So when the critical density is below half, so you see that all the par clusters are small. This is the critical picture that you see at exactly the critical density. So you see clusters of the size of the tree and the supercritical picture where many, many cars are going through the edges well inside uh, the tree. Okay, so our goal is to precise, to make precise uh, this phase transition because we are, uh, like Neil Panozzo just said that there is a uh, phase transition at one half. Now we want to establish scaling limits for this uh, phase transition. Okay, so one theorem, sorry, it's, it's not easy to digest. So let me help you digesting this. This is one theorem that we proved, but it is rather an epiphenomenon. It, uh, it is a corollary of the proof, and the proof is much more interesting than the theorem itself. But let me tell you what it says. So it says first that the critical window, so M is N over 2, is the critical point, as Lackner and Panolza told us. But we say that the critical window is actually n over two plus a big O of n to the two thirds. So interesting things happens uh, in this window. And so this is the critical window. Can you put this, the slide uh, again? No, okay. And, and the other uh, interesting thing that we say in this theorem is that the size of the components is of order n to the two thirds in this critical window. And third thing, so this is this two thirds that you see in orange. And third thing that we say in this theorem is the flux, the flux of outgoing cars. Then this is of order n to the one third, okay? And then we say more precisely that if we renormalize so the component sizes, this CNI, if we renormalize, we have to treat the component of the root a bit apart. So this uh, CN star is the size of the component of the root, but it has the same scaling. And we renormalize the flux by n to the one third. Then we will make a time evolution by saying that M is N over two plus this lambda parameter times n to the two thirds. So lambda lives in R. It goes from negative value to positive values. Okay, this is our time evolution. And then we prove a full scaling limit for this component size saying that as a process, seen as a process, this beast converge towards something here that uh, I will uh, try to describe. And just for the teaser, this beast is related to Aldous multiplicative coalescence, but it's not quite Aldous multiplicative coalescence. Questions? No, you're all digesting. Good. So let me illustrate with a picture this, this convergence. So the, the convergence of the size of the components. So take the critical picture that I showed you already, and then take only the part components, which are, which are these orange components that you see here. So you remove all the blue, which are the, ed the edges that have not uh, seen any car. So you decompose your tree into a bunch of many, many, many trees. And we say, okay, those trees, they have size, not height. They have size roughly n to the two thirds. And we can uh, compute their scaling limit 
as a time uh, dynamical scaling limit. Let me also in, uh, illustrate the uh, the evolution of dn so dn distance for discarded these are those uh, cars that didn't did not manage to park and we have a convergence of this towards a continuous process d d of lambda and it turns out well if you think about that a couple of minutes it should be clear that this d of lambda it will be clear at least d of lambda is related to the size of the component just by integration. So this D of lambda is just the integral of the size of the component in the whole critical window. Okay? So this D of lambda increases in a continuous fashion, whereas the size of the, of the root component makes jump and is similar to a one half stable uh, subordinate. Questions? No? So how can we prove uh, such a result? So the idea, as always in, uh, in random graph, I would say, is not to reveal the graph uh, at once, but to reveal it piece by piece by keeping the randomness uh, you know, undiscovered. This makes things much easier for you. So we will uh, reveal the underlying tree step by step as we need to accommodate the parking, the parking process. So more precisely, when you have your tree TN here and M cars have arrived, so M is, uh, I don't know, 23, you park them and you take only what we call the TNM here, the, the, the forest that you obtain here by keeping only those edges in red here, which are emanating, you know, going down from a black dot, a black dot is a parked vertex. So you do your parking process, you look at all the vertices which are parked, which have a car, and you look at all the edges that goes from these vertices towards the root, all these red edges. Okay, forget about the rest. You get a forest, which I denote TNM, of trees. All right? In this forest, you see that the root of the components, they must be empty vertices, because I have not taken the edge uh, going from this vertex, so it is empty. And we will have a special treatment just to accommodate you. Uh, I will color the component of the, of the root blue when there is a flux here, because, because it's not of the same type as this one, because there is no empty vertex at the root of the root component. Okay? Okay, and then it's, it's if I tell you that, you're probably able to check that TNM is a Markov chain. Believe me. But what is more interesting is that this Markov chain has an evolution which is rather simple. Actually, the component sizes, the component sizes, they evolve roughly like, uh, like in the multiplicative coalescent, like uh, by multiplicative energy. We will make this precise. And more precisely, we will make uh, the edges move. We will redirect the edges and make an explicit coupling between this TNM Markov chain and a variant of the erdos renyi random graph and an exact coupling where the components are the same, not the geometry, but the components. Okay? But in this talk, I will focus on the case, not of the case of random Cayley tree, but the case of random mappings, it's almost the same, but the proof is transparent there. And believe me, uh, believe us, uh, it's the same for random trees up to technicalities. Okay? So I will first describe you what is this variation on the erdos random graph that I mentioned, and then I will present you the coupling between parking on a mapping and this parking uh, and this frozen erdos -Renie. All right? Okay, let's proceed. So what is the frozen erdos -Renie? So before doing the frozen erdos -Renie, let's do uh, the erdos -Renie. So it's, it's a small variant of the most usual erdos -Renie that you see in the literature. We will be on this vertex set, which is one up to N, and we will consider IID oriented edges, this EI, which have oriented edges, x, i, y, i, these are the endpoints and the target point, 
those two guys are just independent and uniform over one or two n. But you can have loops, right? You can have oriented loops. And I will denote by EI without the arrow, the un unoriented version of the edge. Then for us, the standard Erdos-Renyi process is just the GNM, the random graph, which you obtain by just adding all these edges from I going from one up to M, okay? So it's, I say it's a small variant because usually in the literature, uh, we don't consider oriented uh, loops or multiple edges, but here you can have a multiple edges. So let me make this heuristically by just taking all the edges one up to M, okay? So that's the Erdos Reni. You add the edges one by one. Now we will make a small variant of this process by coloring the vertices in two colors, white and blue. Blue will be frozen. And this is what we call the frozen Erdos Reni. And let me tell you what is the evolution of this guy. The evolution of this guy is as follows. You let the same edges arrive one by one, but you have rules which are a little bit different for the evolution of the components. So here is the evolution. So imagine that all the vertices are colored white. White will mean that a component has no cycle inside. That is a tree component. And imagine that an edge, EI, is arriving in this component. Then in the frozen Erdosheni, exactly as in the Erdosheni, you will just add it to your graph, okay? So when there are no cycles, you just add the edges. Now, if you have a component which is a tree, which is white, and you want to add this edge, EI, then you add it. Good. But then you color the component in blue because the component has a cycle, and you will remember from now on that when there is a cycle, it is blue. So, okay, you keep the component, you keep the edge, you add it, but then the component is blue, it is frozen. So it's a bit misleading, this uh, denomination frozen, because it will still evolve, but we are slowing it down. Uh, how? Uh, I'm going to describe. So now imagine that you have an edge riding between a tree component in white and a frozen component in blue. So it must have a cycle somewhere. Then we will distinguish two cases. If the edge goes from white to blue, you keep it, keep it and color the resulting component in blue. Why? Because the component has a cycle, so it is in blue. But if the edge goes in the other direction from blue to white, then you discard it. You keep your white component as it was and the blue component as it was, okay? discard it. And if you have an edge in between two blue components, then you discard. Okay? Are the rules clear? So you let the same edges arrive and you apply those rules and you color the vertices accordingly. So it should be clear that you are never creating more than one cycle in a component with this process. Okay? Simulation, put your glasses on. So that's a simulation of the frozen Erdos over uh, 500, uh, 500 vertices. And you see that the edges arrive and as long as they do not create cycles, it's exactly the same as up the Erdos -Renyi. But then when you made some loops, some cycles, the component is colored in blue and the component colored in blue keep evolving, but at, at a rate which is a bit slower because some edges have been discarded now. Okay? Is the process clear? Okay, so that's the frozen erdos process, which I denote here F for frozen, F and M for M bigger than one. N is fixed. Okay, now parking on mappings. So mappings, Uniform mappings are very, very close to uniform Cayley trees, but I'm just recalling the definition. So what is 
a mapping, a uniform map mapping, is just an acyclic graph, oriented acyclic graph, over the n vertices, one up to n, such that from every vertex, there is only one edge emanating and targeting uh, some, somebody uh, in one end. You could have loops. You see seven, the target of seven is seven itself. Okay? So you take one such graph uniformly at random. For the rest of the talk, let's forget about the number of the vertices on the mapping. And you can proceed to the parking process on a mapping exactly as for the case of trees. When you have an oriented graph, you can do that. Oriented graph so that there is only one edge emanating from uh, every vertex. So let's see. Car number one arrives here, parks here. Car number two arrives here, parks here. Car number three arrives here, parks here. Car number four arrives here, it's already parked. So follows the only outgoing edge from this vertex and parks here because it was free. Then uh, number five here, number six arrives here. Oh, sorry, here, it's already taken. Follow this edge and parks here. Then seven, follow, uh, so, sorry, parks here. And eight, ah, eight is arriving on seven. So it follows the edge, so it follows the edge, so it follows the edge, so it follows the edge. And after some point, say, oh, I, I should rather go because, uh, because I'm trapped in an endless loop. And so this will be a car that does not manage to park, okay? And exactly as in the case of trees, I can define the sub-mapping M and M by letting M car arrive and then consider all edges emanating from a vertex that is already parked. So I take all the vertices that have a car and all edges emanating from those vertices. So I've got some sub, some components of some mapping and to uh, mimic the color there, when I have a cycle, I will color the component in blue. Okay, that's the definition of my M and M. All right, are you following? Digesting, how many coffees? Okay. Coupling. Now we claim that we can couple those two processes. So this graph process, F and M, and this parking on the mapping so that those two guys, F and M and M and M have the same component. Not the same geometry, but the same component with the same color. Okay, so the coupling will uh, work as follows. So let me write it here for you to remember. So the coupling will work as follows. When you are examine, examining thing one edge that is arriving, this edge EM. So remember it arrives on the initial point is XM and the target point is YM. So you will, uh, you will examine this edge in the frozen air de Schrenny. So that will be in, in black in this picture. But imagine that you have already constructed some edges in the mapping. So what is in yellow is in the mapping. And the idea for the coupling is to imagine that the car arrives on the vertex Xn, follows the oriented oriented edges of the mapping that you already constructed until it finds an empty spot to, to park. And if it parks on this empty spot, parks here, then in the mapping, you will add not this edge, but this edge. You add this one in the mapping. So you use the target of EM to say the target of this empty spot is this one. And this one becomes now an empty spot, as you will see. Okay, okay. Uh, let me not do that. Okay, and this construction can be and has to be thought of as a Markovian construction of the mapping. Why? Because I told you that the idea was not to reveal the, the mapping at once. So what we will imagine is that we will reveal the target of the vertices one by one when needed to accommodate the parking process. Okay? 
Let's proceed. It's time to wake up. Everybody's here. Okay. On Zoom as well. <laughs> no action. Okay, so uh, on the right hand side, you have uh, how many? 18, 18 edges. These are these EIs for I from one up to 18. We will use those edges on the right hand side to construct on the right hand side the frozen air de Schreni, this FNM. And on the left hand side, we will construct the parking on the mapping. And I will present the coupling step by step. Okay, so let's analyze the first edge. Edge number I, one, sorry, arrives here. Okay, so in the frozen air de Schreni, no problem. I'll keep this edge. On the parking side, I, I, I use this rule and I imagine that the car arrived on the number one, parks here. And then I reveal what is the parent, what is the target of this guy by using the target of my edge. So the parent of one is the target of this one, which is this one. So in this case, it's just the same edge, no problem. Same thing happens for edge number two. It is added in the frozen air de Schreni and in the parking, same thing happens. Edge number three. So in the park, in the frozen air de Schreni, I just add this edge because no cycle has been created so far. But on the parking side, what does that mean? Uh, well, that means the same. So a car arrives here, parks here, and I use the target of this one to uh, define what is the target of this guy. Okay. Now something interesting happens. See. On the frozen air de Schreni, I'm adding this edge. No cycle has been created, so I'm just adding the edge. But on the parking side, that means that car number four arrives on number three. Ah, there is a car. So I must follow the edges that I have already constructed. Aha, to park here. I park here, and now I use the target of my edge, which is this one, to say, ah, the target of this one in the mapping is this guy. So you see that the orange edge is not the same as the black edge. Five, usual business. Six, something interesting happened. Six, here I'm adding this edge in the frozen air de Schreni and I'm creating a cycle. So the component is colored in blue according to my rule. And here, what does that mean? Six, uh, car number six arrives here, parks here. Ah, and I have a component which has a cycle because I, I have not said, because I use the target of number of this edge number six to say what is the target of this guy. And it is this one. And so I call out the component in blue, as I told you. And you see the blue is blue. Okay. Now let me shut up and, and you try to, to see if uh, we did the picture correct. Seven, eight, aha, eight, eight. Where was eight? Eight was here, arriving here in the frozen. It is an edge between two blue components. So I must discard it according to my rule. And on the left hand side, it is a car arriving on seven. Seven is blue. Since it is blue, that means that there is a loop. If it, if, it, if, it, if, it, uh, if it lands on the component with a loop, that means that the car will be caught in an endless loop. So the car exits. And so the flux of car or the car that did not manage to park correspond in this coupling to the edges that I have discarded in the frozen air tree. Okay? Believe me, it works nicely. And in the end of the day, what is the end of the day? The end of the day is when you have revealed all the targets of the vertices of your mapping. Then you know your mapping. And then you know that if you add a, a new car, it will just escape. Okay? Uh, it's not the end. Here is the end, yes. And that means that everything is blue on the left and on the right. Okay? Hard to digest, but hope you get the idea that we have a coupling between this 
random graph process and parking on mapping so that the components, you see, components are the same. This component is the same as this component, but not the geometry of the component in terms of component. Only. Quick consequence, a striking one, is the fact that if you, I'm, I'm moving back to, to the random tree, but believe me, it works the same. Striking consequence is that if you let n cars arrive on TN, the probability that they all manage to park is you should be convinced by these rules that it should be related to the fact that you have not created any cycle in the frozen air of So there is a, a, a factor here, which is a, uh, counting for the fact that uh, there is something strange at the root, but you see on the right hand side that just the probability that your air de is acyclic. So striking consequence, probability that all guys park is just a probability that GNM is uh, acyclic. And you can compute exactly those probabilities and get and recover a result of Lackner Panholzer, which says that at the critical point when M is N over two, then this probability has a very nice uh, critical exponent N to the minus one six, okay? Okay, now let me move to scaling limits. So this frozen Erdos-Renyi is a variation on the on the Erdos-Renyi, the standard Erdos-Renyi random graph, and it is known. It's it's a famous result of Aldous. Just one minute, a famous result of Aldous that in the critical window, which is exactly this one, if you rescale the component size by n to the two thirds. Then you've got convergence towards a nice process with values in L2, which is called the multiplicative coalescent, the standard multiplicative coalescent, which heuristically is a process made of particles of ma positive mass, such that two particles of mass X and Y merge into a single particle of mass X plus Y at a rate, which is the multiplication of X and Y. Yes, Michel. And the color. If the components are the same, then their sizes are the same. No? If A is equal to B, then cardinal of A is the same as cardinal of B. No, what I, I don't know. I don't understand what you mean. The sizes of yes, the sizes of the components are the same. Yeah. But it's the corollary of the fact that the components are the same. No? Okay, maybe we can discuss that. Uh, uh, okay, so this is the result of Aldous on the standard GNM. So it should not come as a surprise uh, that the, this modified guy obeys a similar theorem, although it's not a piece of cake, but we prove that if you take this frozen air Doshreni random process, this FNM, and you take the same critical window, and you rescale the components by the same factor n to the two thirds, then you also have a convergence in distribution for the score code metric towards a process, which we call the frozen multiplicative coalescent, which is now a process made of particles which have mass, positive mass, but so that the evolution is slightly different. The, the particles, they have two types, standard white particles and blue frozen particles. And the evolution between two standard white particles is the same, exactly as it was the same, the same rules for the frozen. Between two white particles, you add the edge. Then between two white particles, you coalesce at a rate, which is the multiplication of X and Y. But then between a white and a blue component, the rate is slowed down by a factor one over two. Why? Because in half of the cases, you just discard the edge. And and also a white particle can become a blue particle, which corresponds exactly to adding an edge in a white component, freezing it, becoming blue. Yes? Yes, from minus infinity to plus infinity. Good question. Okay, so I'm not making the proof of that, but it, it is based, it uses a lot uh, the results of Aldous, of, uh, of Nicolas. Where is Nicolas? Yeah. Nicolas, je t'ai vu. 
I saw you, Nicola, Nicola and Jean-François. So we use a lot uh, inputs, uh, a lot of inputs from uh, the multiplicative coalescence. Okay, so, so if you believe in this theorem, then I have made 80% of the proof of the, of the theorem that I stated on the components of the parking process. Because I told you, I have a coupling so that the components are the same. I have a scaling limit for the components. So you take just this scaling limit and, uh, and you get the result for the mapping, but it's the same for trees, up to slight variation. Yes? No, actually, very good point. Actually, the thing you need to do between the, the mapping and the KLA is take all the blue and glue them to, together. So in the so for the for the, the tree case, in you take this frozen multiplicative, multiplicative coalescent and you gather all the blue particles together, and this exactly describes what is uh, the case of trees. Good questions. Yes. Yes, but yeah, 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 yeah no, but it, it it is already x squared of it is already x squared over two here. Yeah. So the question is, what, why, why is the rate x y here and the rate x squared over two here? Because here the rate x y, you must think of actually two x y because there is an edge here and an edge like that, and these two edges. Yep. So, so. It could be x squared, but if it's x squared, then it's 2xy. But since we normalize to xy, this is x squared over 2. Very good question. OK. So that's the proof of the theorem. But now let's give a quick look to the components themselves. Because I told you the components are the same, but the geometry is very different. So what is this the geometry? So uh, I put back the same picture. I add, this is the critical picture of the, the so something like 10,000 uh, parking spot with uh, 5,000 cars arriving. Then I decompose into the park components, which are these very strange and elongated trees. So what are those trees? They are not at all Kelly trees because they are what we call fully parked trees. The cars that are arriving on those uh, uh, trees, they must park on, the, on this tree, they must all park. And so this is exactly uh, what, we, what uh, we draw here, a fully parked tree, or in the paper, a nearly parked tree. It is a Cayley tree of size N with N minus one cars. So that if you park those cars, they all manage to park. It is a very unlikely event, very unlikely, exponential, uh, exponentially small probability. So we condition on this event, but we condition the, the pair of cars and trees. So if we condition on that, then the law of the tree is really changed. Okay? And here you've got a simulation of one of these fully parked trees of one of size uh, 15,000. Okay? So what do we know about those trees? We know that actually when they have size capital N, so the, not the little n of the graph, but capital N, so the size of a component, this capital N is N to the two thirds in the critical window. Then they have a typical height or typical diameter, if you, if you wish, N to the three quarters. So much more elongated than a standard Galton Watson tree with a, a finite bias. And we can also compute the total flux, which is the total uh, length uh, driven by all the cars on this, uh, on this tree, and it's n to the 5 fourths. Aha, interesting. But actually, we know the guy. We know the guy, and we have a conjecture. We conjecture that those trees, once you renormalize the metric by n to the 3 quarters, and once you renormalize the flux, along the edges by square root of n, because square root of n times three quarters is uh, times n to the three quarters is n to the five uh, quarters. It should converge towards John G, F, T, three half, S, S, uh, N, C, one, zero. Growth, fragmentation, tree, uh, associated with the three half stable spectrally negative Levy process 
condition to start from zero and to have area one. Qui a compris? Well, it's your birthday, right? So uh, one quick way of uh, describing uh, the beast would be to say, you all attend the talk of Bastien. So you take these branching Levy processes for some specific Levy process and you do a Lamperti transform and you get the guy. But let me go through the construction once more because I think it is worth it. So how to build those trees? You have a positive cell similar Markov process, which in our case is just a version of the three half stable Levy process with only negative jumps. So imagine that you have in your pocket a, 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 a random process which starts from one, does only negative jumps, and eventually die at zero without crossing the, you know, the, the axis. Okay, then you let run, you let this process run, and this first bit will give you the first branch of your tree. So the length here, the time it takes for the particle to die, so I will imagine that this is a particle of size one, the time it takes to die is the length of the first branch. And I will imagine that every negative jump will be interpreted as a birth event. So good, because what is negative is actually positive. It's a birth event. Birth is nice. So I take every negative jump here, and I will, independently of that, sample this positive cell similar Markov process started from the value of the jump until it dies. Okay? And this will give me the length here will give me the length of this second branch, and I will graph this second branch exactly at that time here, which corresponds to that time here along the branch. Am I correct, John? And then you do that for all negative jumps of the initial particle, but also, but also you need to iterate inside the second generation of the particle. So here you will do the same. You will iterate every negative jump will be interpreted as a birth event and you glue, 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 glue. Okay? You do that ad vitam aeternam. And in the end, what you get on the right hand side is a random tree. And you should imagine that this random tree is labeled by exactly the label of the particles that you add from these processes. Okay? So I'm skipping a lot of details here, but this gives a labeled continuum random tree. Exercise for you, what is the topology for labeled continuum random tree? C'est une blague que, que Jean et Igor peuvent comprendre. Then once you have that, you need to perform a double degenerate conditioning because here I described you the, the tree started from one particle of size one and I let the area, which I have not defined, totally free. But I want to condition both on the, start, on the starting particle to have size zero and to have an area, which I have not defined, one. These are two events of probability zero, and you need to condition on both. But this is what we did. And uh, lower bound. It's the Bible. And if you believe in that, then, uh, then I recast the conjecture that this guy, our uh, nearly part tree, properly rescaled with the flux, should converge towards this guy that you obtained in this fashion. Yep. Yes. Flux edges is, if you are an edge, you can count the number of cars that have been going through you. This is the flux along this edge. So you can imagine that your tree is labeled by the flux uh, that the edges of the tree are labeled by the flux. Okay, and then you renormalize this by square root and you have a convergence in a topology that we are still uh, struggling with, topology of a labeled continuum random tree. Uh, I don't know who will win, Hippopo or uh, Cadillac, we'll see, Hippopo. May, but these are vu, these are vu. Okay. I tried, but we know those guys. We already encountered those guys because those, those random trees are the trees that already, have, those gross fragmentation trees are the trees that already appeared in the study of scaling limit of random planar maps. See our preceding work with Jean, Igor, and Timothy. 
or the work of Miller Sheffield, this is implicit in their work, or uh, the explicit work of uh, Jean, uh, Jean Francois and uh, Armand, uh, who do that, who they do that uh, uh, already in the continuous, directly in the continuous. Okay, and just to be a bit more precise, those three, they appear if you take one of these beasts, those random planar maps, you pick one vertex and you uh, draw this, this uh, map as a cactus representation by displaying the map uh, according to their distance to the, the root, or, or the root here is a boundary. But you see some tree appearing here, hidden inside. And the, the labels, the perimeters, the labels on this tree are the perimeters if you imagine that you slice these two dimensional objects by a, a plane at a given height. So you get a, a tree like that. And if you perform a Lamperti transform on this guy, you recover exactly the Jean uh, GFT uh, three half uh, SSN C zero one. All right. Some questions. So it, it's really, uh, it's really, yeah. The the the, the last one I have no, no clue. Uh, but for the first one, uh, it this construction is really uh, uh, reminiscent of the construction of the minimal spanning tree. Uh, and work of uh, Gregory, Nicola, uh, Christina, uh, Luigi, uh, where they add edges one by one and they discard when you create cycles. So it's really reminiscent of that, except that we are redirecting the edges and we have this blue component playing a special role. And so uh, it, uh, it gives the feeling that this gross fragmentation, three half stable gross fragmentation tree they can be built also by multiplicative merging, like in the minimal spanning tree, but with redirection of the edges. So there is an obvious link with planar maps, but uh, is this link more than uh, just a smoking gun? Universality of the models and so on and so forth. And uh, happy birthday again. Are there questions? Um, is it easy to for you to motivate uh, what made you think of this conjecture? Oh, like, the conjecture, the yeah. Uh, like, it's it's one of those moments in life when you stumble stumble upon a gem, and you see uh, the, the the real story is that this model was around uh, 2015. Uh, we started uh, uh, struggling on this model. Uh, it was Olivier, where is Olivier, who came from China with this model in his pocket in his pocket, and he says, "Ah, oh, there is an interesting model." And and as we were working on the model with Olivier and then with Alice. Then we discovered, oh, but the, 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 there is the Erdoshreni. Oh, but those guys, we know those guys. So uh, actually, it's more of a coincidence, a beautiful coincidence, that all the objects that uh, Jean <laughs> has introduced over the last 15 years, they are in this model already. Then I can explain the proof. <laughs> so the, the, that was the history. And then if you want uh, motivation or kind of a proof, then the, the way the flux of car splits at the root of a nearly park tree is exactly the same in the scaling limit as for those trees in random planar maps. So in words, if you have a random planar map with a perimeter P, say three, the size is three, you look how this P splits when you perform one pinning step, then it splits roughly speaking like this, uh, this function, okay. P to the minus five half. Okay, let me put an X here. That's a particle. X of size one splits, okay, into X and one minus X. And you see this appearing. So for those who know the Brownian case, the Brownian case, you have a three half and you do need compensation and so on. Here, you've got a five half. And when you see this uh, splitting, uh, splitting uh, rule, then uh, unless the devil is against you, that means that this is the guy uh, hidden behind. But then, then 
you need to do proof. Thank you. Was there questions? Uh, well, there is something which uh, I found very interesting in, uh, in the multiplicative uh, coalescent is uh, that there is a very rich uh, entrance boundary, uh, which was uh, studied by uh, Eldus and Limich. Yes. And in the, at the beginning of your, your talk, you mentioned this uh, paper with, uh, with Gregory, uh, in which we introduced uh, caravan instead of cars. Uh, so this might suggest that maybe, so question is roughly, do you have any idea of the entrance boundary of your frozen uh, multiplicative coalescent? And it's two questions, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me count. So uh, for the entrance boundary, no, I have no clue. And uh, it's, it's, it's even, uh, I'm a bit ashamed because in the multiplicative coalescent, uh, now the entrance boundary is uh, uh, nicely approached by the fact that the multiplicative coalescent can be seen as the excursion length of a process which has a drift, which is a lambda, this Buronian guy with a drift lambda, and the entrance boundary is just you start from some lady process and so on. But we don't have, uh, we tried a little bit, not very hard, but we don't have the same description for the frozen Erdoschrini as the excursion length of some drifted function. So I, I would start, so, to attack this question, I would start from uh, yeah, trying first to describe the frozen Erdoschrini as the excursion length of some uh, function which uh, has a drift. For your second question, yes, uh, actually uh, Alice is working on that. When you replace one car uh, by a bunch of cars, and there, there is a whole new world uh, family, uh, a family of uh, different uh, universality classes which correspond to the um, to the classes you get in the uh, uh, configuration model when you have heavy tailed the uh, thesis of Adrien Joseph. So there are Zoom questions? There is one in here. But... Yeah. Okay, so we have some uh, Zoom questions. Um, Arthur, do you are you able to unmute yourself? Which Arthur? This uh, is, can I speak? Uh, no. Sorry, Arthur Blanc Renaudy. Bonjour. Um, Otherwise, I can I can transmit. I am mute or not? Okay, so I'm going to ask it. Um, so the question is, do you think it is possible to adapt the coupling for multiplicative graph or even configuration model to study parking on P trees or trees with fixed degree sequence? See Alice, <laughs> same answer. Okay. See Alice. Okay, so then uh, we have a question uh, from Christina. Hi, Nicola, can you hear me? You... Wait, wait, we can't hear you. Can't hear me, oh, that's harder. Um... Salut Christina. Hi, <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Um, so this is maybe a, a sort of question in the realms of sort of slightly fantasy maths at the moment, but it feels to me like you ought to have potentially scaling limits for your frozen Erdoschrini process at the level of the components themselves. Is it possible then that there might be a sort of continuum version of your coupling that would then also give you on the other side the totally the fully parked trees or so again again i count two questions so on the frozen air uh, I, I think it's uh, it's doable yes on the frozen air i'm not redirecting the edges so i think we can describe the scaling limit of the components themselves uh, as being versions of bronian trees or with the cycle exactly as in your uh, papers then uh, then the second question is uh, can we push this with the redirection of the edges? Uh, not clear, not clear because, uh, because, uh, because the redirection totally changes. Where, well, you, you go from components of size square root 10 to components of size n to the uh, three over four. So uh, yeah, it's much more complicated for the second part of the question. I, I have no clue. Thank you. But it's a very good question. 
So we also had a question from uh, uh, Bastien and uh, Min Min, but I think that uh, uh, you have already answered them actually. Um, and, but we have a question from uh, Nathanael Enriquez. Uh, Nathanael, are you able to? Uh, uh, yes, I, 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 if you hear me, I can. Yes, at least uh, I do. We're going to try to, to put your uh, image as well. Uh, mm. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I was wondering, because I didn't uh, know uh, this uh, frozen Erdős-Trény model, I, I was wondering if there were some uh, non-dynamic uh, vision of this model uh, with, uh, I don't know, a Gibbs measure on forest, uh, at, at least as, at some fixed or at some stopping time of this uh, procedure you described. Uh, very interesting question. So uh, there is an easy answer for the frozen Erdoshani here. If you fix NM, then the components are the component sizes you get in the mapping, uh, parking on the mapping. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm cheating there. But actually, you've got a whole family for the frozen Erdoshani where you allow for a parameter here to keep it, to keep the edge or not. Here, the parameter was, a, was, was one and a half, roughly speaking. You keep it with 41 half. And if you put a parameter there, you get a whole family of frozen Erdoshreni with a parameter P and that you can, uh, that have similar properties and that you can hope uh, to analyze. And let me just tell you something. Uh, I, so in, I, short, I, in short, I have- Just, I, I have, can't, just, uh, just one thing. I, I, I can't see uh, if you are on the blackboard or any, I, I can't ah, see- uh, Okay, no, no big deal. Okay, so let me, okay. let me I have no, no, no clear answer to your question, but there is one uh, thing that is nice in the Fosser Erdoshreni with parameter half is when you take M is equal to N at the very end, when everything is blue, oh. mm -hmm. then what, you, what do you get? What you get uh, the cycle oh. component of a mapping, and this is a Gibbs distribution. Ah. So at the very end, in the frozen mm. Erdoshreni with parameter half, you get a Gibbs distribution. But in between, uh, I, I would not uh, bet on that. Maybe at some stopping time. Maybe at some st stopping time, yeah. But we really see it dynamically. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I, I just uh, to have another vision of it. And uh, mm. I have no clue. Okay. But, but very and good question. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, and the way the. the uh, uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, it's, it's stupid. No, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so time is running on. I propose that, uh, well, if you have some more questions, you can ask them directly to Nicola. And uh, let's thank him again for this very nice talk. So two minutes uh, before the next talk that will be online.
Isso é good. Servette, je ne sais oui, pas si oui, ça, ça va, tu m'entends, mais on ne... est-ce que tu pourrais essayer de brancher ta caméra et ton micro Ma caméra et mon micro. Ah, les micros aussi Je ne sais pas si j'avais... On te voit, mais on ne t'entend pas pour l'instant. Mais le micro est déjà connecté pour ceux qui sont en ligne. Ah, ah, je sais pas C'est bon, on... là on t'entend maintenant. Oh, tu m'entends oui, ça va tout marche. Tout marche tu On te voit, on t'entend et on voit tes slides. D'accord. Ok, so now we have the pleasure to listen to Servette Martinez, who will talk about quasi stationary distribution in recombination. Ok, uh, well, first of all, I'm very glad to, to participate in this, in this meeting in honor of Jean. Thanks to the for the for the invitation. I came to know John 20 years ago when he visited the Center of Mathematical Modeling for one of our schools in information and randomness. And he presented there a course on fragmentation theory. There we discuss on a problem on modeling. Servette, oui, yes. excuse me, could you try to speak better uh, closer to the microphone? Because when you move your head, we don't listen to you. Okay. Uh, yes. Is, and, now, now it's good? Yes. When you speak in this direction, it's okay. And can you try also okay. to, to the camera to put it a bit up so that we, we can see your face entirely? Okay, okay, okay. I am learning. <laughs> That's right? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well, I was saying that there uh, I present him uh, to Jan a, a problem on fragmentation in mining process. And there I, I could appreciate the, the depth and finesse of mathematical thinking of Jan. Jan is a very good friend of, of Latin America. Well, in all the aspects and uh, well one have must have the the courage and the good vibre to do it uh, we acknowledge we, we we really we acknowledge that that he has opened new areas a new line of research and also he has advised uh, many of the scientific activities at at our center and many thanks and really Happy, happy birthday, Jan. And so now I, I start my, my presentation. Well, I will speak on quasi-station distribution and recombination. Recombination has a, a long history of, in, 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 in biology. In, as you ma, many of you must know more than me uh, on, this, on, the, on, the, on the huge bibliography on, on this topic. Some of the reference there, perhaps one of the, the oldest one is more than 100 years ago with the, the paper of Hardy and also after with the model of Hardy and um, Bimberg on Mendelian proportion in mixed population that appear in science. After uh, there was a very important uh, paper of Hilda Heidinger on the probability theory of in, in linkage in Mendelian heredity after Bennett and Dawson. This is the line I, 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 I the line of thinking I, I, I will, will I will develop my my talk. And I must say that uh, uh, part of um, a big part of what I will speak on will be is is it come from a model a model of uh, Ellen Bakke and Michael Bakke uh, that appeared some 50, 15 years ago on a model for mutation, recombination, selection. And there, after there were many papers uh, by, 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 their, by, by their team, by the, by the team of Ellen. Ellen is 
biomathematics, they work in, in Bielefeld. Uh, Michael is, uh, works, is very well known, but he works on, on dynamical system. But around Ellen, there was there is a whole, whole many people working around this, this model on, on recombination. I will present the first part will be what is my view of, of the model of Ellen and Michael. And after I will give the what is the, 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 the what can be an approach for 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 quasi station distribution there because the 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 the, 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 the limit behavior is, is is in some sense is is is, is trivial so we search for for having some some approach on quasi station distribution and if if this can get some 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 sort of new knowledge on the problem of recombination. A, a big part of what I will talk is, is, is in, or all what I will talk is in, 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 in finite, mark, it, it, is, it will be a finite Markov chain. So there are not the, 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 all, the, all the risk phenomena that, that appears when you take the limits. And also uh, the, the, there are some hypotheses that I must make and so you, you, you will see that also the, the, there are many other phenomena that can, can, can be studied in, in, in probability and that will not appear here. Perhaps with the tools of fragmentation, I'm sure that uh, will allow fragmentation theory in a, in, in, in a larger scope, will allow to, 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 say, to, to, to say many more things about this model. What, what is recombination? Perhaps the 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 in La Heidinger in forty four says that if for certain generation we know the distribution genotypes and you know some law of heredity, then the distribution in next generation can be computed. This is the the main thing that we we will be we will use. That is to say, we will use discrete time because there is a next generation. And also we will use non-overlapping generation that all generations are not overlapping. Uh, excuse me, uh, okay, I cannot use. And non-overlapping and uh, that generations are, uh, there is a very large population, uh, very large population and there will be no mutation of selection there. And I, uh, 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 what is recombination? Recombinations where genetic is genetic mechanism where you, one reshuffles the genetic material of different individuals from generation to generation. Okay, this is what recombination is, and I, I, I must say that there is a, 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 there is a, 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 there have been ma ma many words mixing. Uh, 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 mixing or, or putting recombination in, in the scope of, of population of, of um, um, but uh, this give rise to, to, to nonlinear equation, to quadratic equations. This, there are two big papers of Harry Keston on, on the 70s on this topic, but the, 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 this will be now my, my point. Of my, I will not deal with this. This is a very, a very deep a very deep problem. I will put me, myself in the really in the in the in in the in some sort of the steady state, where, as you will see, we will try to understand a, what is the the proportions of uh, of, of of the of the distribution of genetic material in in, in a certain population. So this is the equation we will do. Uh, so we are the recombination equation proposed by by Ellen Bakke and, and Michael Bakke, and in some sort that summarizes all the equations that have appeared in, in in during the the past century is the following one is there it is put in here below. So we are assuming discrete time. We are assuming that generation do not overlap. So there will be a finite set of sites. In each sites, 
you, you will put some letter, a finite alphabet. So there will be some characters that could be genes or could be letters or nucleotides. You, you will have the set of sequences encoding the genetic information and you will study the set of probability on this, on this set of sequences. So you will have some measure on the set of sequences and a crucial role will be played by the marginals on some subset of the, of the, of the sites. And for the partition of the sites, you will put, a, a, you, will, you will consider the product measure of the, a, of the marginal on each one of the atoms. So you put the atom, you, you make the product along the atoms of the, of the marginals. And so there will be a class of, of, of partitions of the sites. I, I will call it when I when I speak on them, uh, the, cut, the cutting partitions. There will be a class of partitions. There will be a probability vector on this class of partitions. And the recombination transformation of population genetic information is the following one. You take a measure mu, uh, excuse me, I, I need to, okay. Okay. You take a mesham, a mesham mu and you shuffle of the measure with a, by choosing a partition of the cutting partitions and taking the, the product measure along the marginals on all the atoms of the partition. And so after you consider the evolution of the genetic information in the population, this is what are proposing back and back if as the uh, as the as the recombination equation and when you develop it in, in in terms of densities on each one of the types on the on the set of sequences you will see that this is very a very complicated uh, uh, non-linear equation okay. and to explain what how this equation appears let us see what happened with binary partitions. For binary partitions, the children's sequence are, de are derived from two parents, okay? There is a maternal and paternal genetic information represented by two independent random elements. So you choose a maternal and you choose, you choose a, a, a mother, you choose a father. They have, each one of them have a, a distribution on the set of sequence. We will su suppose that at the beginning, they are, they both are equal distributions as, as, as mu. This is the distribution of the information, the population, and they mix it. They are genetic material. So the, the genetic material inherited by a child from the, from the mother, it is choosing some, some G, which is the G part of the material of the mother, and the complement will be the genetic material of the father. So there will be a, a binary partition, okay? A G and G complement chosen with some, with some law, okay? And both are distributed, both uh, the, the partition is distributed according to some law, but it is independent of the, of, of the choice of, of, of the parents. And so you will you see that the, 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 the the law of the shield of the population in the next generation is the following one. It is choosing the partition and mix it the and mix it the genetic the genetic material. This so this is the this is the distribution of the children genetic information. It is given by by this transformation. Uh, to, to give a, 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 an example of this. When you take that the sites are one and two, you take that two characters, uh, capital A and small a, so you will have four, four pairs. Uh, this was studied for when one of them is dominant, the, the other is recessive. You, you take some proportion of the pairs with the, with the symmetry on the, on the pairs of the uh, dominant and recessive. Uh, the, uh, the, the partition will be the partition, the discrete partition. This will be the partition, the cutting partition. So to, to study the, 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 the equation, the above equation, we must take, uh, so here we choose only one partition, this partition, this is the cutting partition. 
So you compute the marginals and the, pro the product measure will be this one is given by this, these expressions. And this is a fixed uh, pay, uh, point of, for the iteration after you see it, because after you, you cannot continue to, uh, to uh, when you use again this partition, you obtain the same thing. So the same measure. And historically, this was the paper of, 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 of Hardy. This is the paper of Hardy in science. And uh, here we have the, 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 the interest, the, genetic, the, the, the interest, the historical interest is, was that after one, after one iteration, uh, it was, you, you, you attain immediately the equilibrium for the population. This is, this is said here in this, in the conclusion of this paper, and this, this has a, a very important historical, uh, uh, it was very, very important historically. So let us study the, the, the equation. So I will study the equation. I will not take limits. This is very hard things to take limits after, but I will only study, study the, the equation in this fine setting. Okay, uh, to, to give some, 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 some notation that you all know, uh, we, we, we take D, the family of partitions. A partition is, will be noted many times by delta. The, the atoms, uh, I will put uh, uh, the, uh, the number of atoms is noted in this way. Uh, this is the notation for saying that one partition is finer than another partition. This is the refinement of the partition. And the, 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 perhaps the most important notation is the, this one. When you have a partition, you have a set. This is the, the restriction of the partition to the set. And so the marginals, these are the marginals. The, the importance is that the margin on the empty set is one. And one of the most important property of the, of the, of the product of the marginal, it is this thing. Then when you have two sets that are disjoint and uh, you take another set, another set that uh, is included in the union and when you restrict the, the, the product measure to, to this new set, it is the product measure of the restriction. This is a stable under restriction and perhaps this is a, 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 this is a, 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 a very uh, important fact, I, I, I will say that this is the only property that you need for the product of measure. That is to say, instead of having product of measure, you can have another operation of measure, but you need that it is stable under restriction. This is really the, the most important property we use on the product of measure. And the other element uh, I, I, I need to continue is the action of partitions. Okay, so uh, uh, as I have introduced before, there is the cutting partitions. That they are the partition chosen for cutting the, 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 the genetic information of the, of the ancestors, okay, to produce the new child. And for each partition delta, we will consider the set of tuples, the set of delta tuples in, of cutting partitions. That is to say, for each atom on the partition delta, I choose a cutting partition that I know like that, delta k for the atom k. And the, 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 the objective is that each atom of the partition delta will be cut with this partition, with the, with the component delta delta uh, d delta k. Okay? So this will produce a new partition when we have a, a, a tuple of partition, a delta tuple, each one of the atoms will be cut with the component on the atom K. So each one of the atom of a partition will be cut. This, is, this will allow us to, 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 to give the evolution of the, of the uh, recombination process. Obviously this new partition will be finer, will be finer than the, than the previous one when you cut again with the same partition, with the same tuple, you, you will obtain the same partition. And when you cut with only one, all the atoms with only one partition, we, you will obtain the, the refinement of the, of the partition delta with the, with the partition you are cutting. Uh, when you cut the, the trivial partition, obviously you will obtain always the, the cutting partitions. So the first proposition is, 
if the iteration, what happens with the iteration of the of recombination uh, operator? So remember, we were we have a, a recombination operator where we choose a partition, and we and we take the product measure of the of the marginals, and so the 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 the, 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 the evolution of the operator at time n is given also by a new operator having the same shape. It is, it is co a combination, a, a combination of, of product measure of, on some, on some, uh, on some marginals, on some atoms, on some partitions. But the, here the partitions belong to some special set at time n and the, and you have a, this is a, uh, the, the, this is the combination is given by also is produced with the probability vector. And here you have the, the transition, this uh, an important fact uh, to follow, the, the, you have a transition, uh, the, 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 this, the, this recursion on the partition vector, on the probability vector selection of partitions, it is as follows. Uh, first of all, the set, what are the set Hn? The first set A0 is a, the, the error partition. The first set is the, is the trivial partition. And the, the evolution, the time n plus one is given in time in terms of the, of the, of the partition at, at, at step n. And they are all the cutted partition with delta tuples. So how I construct the new partition from n to n plus one, I cut the, the, the partitions with uh, delta, delta tuples of them in each atom, I cut each one of the atom with the partition, what I have called the cutting partition. Obviously this stabilizes the set I, I chain are, uh, uh, they are included, they are all, uh, they are, they are uh, bigger and bigger and they stabilize it. And I must always add, I will always add the, the trivial partition. And so, here, what is the what is the new vector for 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 combining this 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 uh, this product measure on the marginals? This new vector is the following one: the vector of shoes of, of delta prime, the vector which I I, I am weighting delta prime, is uh, at time n plus one. It's composed of all the vectors from, from a step uh, n, such that they can be produced by a refinement of all their atoms to delta prime. And I must weight this by the, 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 the weight of delta, and also by the product uh, of, of choosing each one of the cutting partitions at, for each one of the atoms. This will be the this is the evolution of the of the of the of the of the operator, and the proof is it's quite quite easy. The only fact that you must uh, put attention is at this step, at this step, that is to say, for the inductive step, when you make the product measure of the sum of the sum of. Uh, of product measures of the marginals, we must take put attention on this because this give this expanded along the, uh, and this is why it, it is important to consider the tuples. That is to say, each one of the of the of the of the partition here delta is expanded along all these atoms, and this is why one one obtained the, the this shape of the of the operator. This is the only. The, 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 the only delicate point, but if not, it's, it's, it's a very standard. But obviously we, 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 this, the, the expression doesn't tell us very important things, but it's also a writing of some formula. So let us study it in, in, from, from as a Markov chain. So to, 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 to introduce the elements of the Markov chain, let us introduce a double sequence. Uh, let us introduce a probability space where 
you will have here the only the, the space of cutting sequences for time n and for atoms i, that, that is to say, and, uh, and each one of the of this choice, if one if one is is choosing cutting partitions at time n with i uh, for s sites, it is always independent because all the all the choice of the cutting partition is made independently. So it is the product measure. And so what is what will be the the, the, the evolution of the Markov chain, it is, will be as follows. First, we will start from some partition. This, it, this will be a, a, a Markov chain on the set of partitions. So this is a very well known thing for, for all of you. And in the next step, in the next step of time, I will cut, I will cut the partition YN with, with a, the, with the cutting partitions chosen with this product measure, okay? One for each atom, that is to say, this will be the partition Yn plus one will be the partition, it is here. It is the partition in which each one of the atoms of Yn will be cut, each one of the atom will be cut with a copy of a partition of one of the cutting partitions. This will be the, the evolution. This is this is Markov chain, okay? And 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 the first one take values in this set, and the other one in H infinite. That is to say, in fact, y n takes value in H n when y zero takes is the is the is the is the trivial partition, and this will be a Markov chain, and the and the the, the probability. The transition probability will be this one. It will be from going to, to delta to delta prime. It will be constituted of all the delta tuples such that when we cut the partition delta, we obtain the partition delta prime. And as you see, this, this probability, this transition probability has the same shape at this, at this number of this, as this, as as the number that it appears in the evolution of the operator. And so this, this said the following this said the following thing. Then when we take the probability mesh, that is the product mesh of the marginals on the partition of time n, when we are starting from the trivial partition. And this is the mean expected value for the for the chain. The mean expected value of this partition, it will be, it will have this shape. That is will that is to say, it will be the uh, the a mean along the product measure of the of, along the marginals at time n of all the partition that we obtain at step n, and so one has that the evolution operator of mu, it is the mean expected value of the part of the of the of the mark of the measure of this measure of this mark of chain along the set of partitions. Okay, and so this open us and this allow us to study all this all all, all, all the recombination structure with a finite partition, a finite uh, with a finite mark of chain on the set of partitions. So let us study what, what, what this gives. So the, first of all, as you will see, there will be no uh, excursion. There will be no excursion because it has a, a, a tree structure. Uh, first of all, uh, th this is the connection. The connection from delta to delta prime means that we can cut delta with, with a, a vector of cutting partition and we obtain delta prime, okay? Uh, from the trivial partition, in one step, we only go to the cutting partitions. Uh, we can go from delta to delta. We can go. We ma we can make some loops, and we can have some paths. And there is a path from the trivial partition to any one of the other partitions. Okay. 
obviously we are going to finer and finer partitions, so there are no cycles. This is a, a, Marco, a finite Markov chain with no cycles. And, so, and for all the paths, we have all the passes that are lower passes have probability, positive probability measure. And when you leave a partition, you never reconcrete. This is the, well, the characteristic of the chain. And the other characteristic, it is that the, the probability of making a loop is increasing along the along the and along the evolution of the of the of the Markov chain that this is the probability of making a loop. Making a loop means that along all the atoms of the partition delta, we only choose cutting partitions that left invariant the, the, the left invariant the atom. Okay. So this is the probability of making a loop. This will be important. And so when we when one goes from delta to delta prime, the probability of making a loop is increasing. And so where we where is what is the stationary distribution of this of this Markov chain? The, the, the stationary distribution is really the they are all the all the trajectories are absorbed by, by the common refinement for the partitions. This will be this all converges to a, to, a, to a single point. Okay, this is the finest partition in the in, in in the that we can obtain. This this is constituted of the refinement of all the cutting partition. This is a, a, a an absorbing point. Okay, of the chain. So that and it is the unique absorbing point. That is to say, if, uh, it is the only one for which one can have that starting from it, we can go to it. And so, and it, and then the associated measure to it is a, a fixed point for the, for the recombination equation. And uh, for all the other partitions, uh, the number of, of time we are, we remain in the partition is finite and the, the probability of making a loop in, in, in all the other partition, it is smaller than one. And this will be this will be theta will be the 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 the, the time the heating time of the of the of the of the of the limit partition of the finest one, and as we have said, this is a, this is exactly the the limit behavior. This give the limit behavior. All trajectories converge to this partition. So for understanding the what is the limit, the, the quasi-limit behavior just before absorption, because we will condition to do not be in the, in the, in the finest partition, because in the population, in many populations, we observe that people have different, uh, different uh, compositions, genetic compositions. So we can, we can assume that we are not at the steady state, but we are at some other state. So, what, what will be the, 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 the candidates to do not be the, 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 the steady state will be the partitions just before absorption. What is happening just before we are absorbed by the finest partition. So these are the partition that, that, go, to, that go to the finest one and they are different from them. These are the, the set of partition that go that are connected to it. These are the first candidates we can we can find, and the other candidates are those that have the biggest probability of making some loop. Okay. So the, these are these are the the, the 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 set that we will be the crucial the crucial set for understanding the quasi-stage distribution, and this is the this is the, one of the the results. So we take the time, the heating time of the finest partition. We always attain it. Okay. We take the, the set of partitions, a lower partition that that are different from the finest one. This is those partitions that go to the finest one, connected to the finest one, and I take the maximum of the of having a loop. And then the first thing is that 
all the partitions that attain the maximum of, of probability of having a loop of remaining in the same in the same partition, they make part of the partition that are connected to the finest one, and the 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 geometric rate of of attaining the 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 the, the, the partition the finest partition it is exactly eta, and this is also the limit of of surviving. That this surviving means that we are not attaining the limit partition, and that at time n we are in the in the in the set of of partitions that have the the probability the biggest probability of making a loop, and this have this shape, and this have in some sense some interest of have having this shape because uh, in, in previous work, we have never found this, this kind of quantity to explain the quasi strange distribution. It is the uh, expectation of the, uh, the, the, the uh, at least the, the, the expression for, 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 the, for the geometric absorption. It is the, the, the expectation of this quantity. It is eta power the time of attaining the set M of of maximum of maximum probability of loop, and so the quasi extension distribution it is given by this by this expression. It is it is given by the probability that we are at some partition delta, given that we have not attained the limit the limit point. It is this ratio, the ratio of attaining delta versus the ratio of attaining uh, the, the 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 set M. For all the other partitions, they, they have no mass at the at the at the, at the in, in the quasi limit distribution. The the, the proof uh, it have some interest at, of some points. I will try to to say you which are the points. For many of you, perhaps you have you have guessed which 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 are the and the main points. The first the first thing is that when we have a, a a, 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 we, when we have delta that is in the in in, in the in a partition that maximizes the probability of having a loop, we have two possibilities: we can remain in the partition or we can go to the to the finest partition. And so, this implies that the set of partition that maximizes the the probability of making a loop. Is the is contained in the set of partition that makes a transition to the final partition. Okay. And so after the, the perhaps the, the, the other the other point, it is this trivial one, then when we start from a, a maximal from a, a, a partition having a maximal probability of loop, the probability of being after 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 time n, it is trivially eta power n because we can go to, to the final partition, remain on delta. So this is this is trivial. And so when we when we compute these quantities, when we compute these quantities, we have that the probability of not being in M it, 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 it has a, a, a decay, a very a, a decay, a very quick decay. So this will be this will be uh, very small with compared with this with the other term. Okay, and so uh, th this is given because uh, the probability of not being M, given that we are not absorbed, it is it decays it, de uh, it decays to zero uh, geometrically. So the only thing that it is important is that uh, that at time n, if we are not absorbed, we we want, must be at the at the partition that has this maximization of loop. I see. Excuse me. And the and 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 the other point it is why we have the expression the 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 the, 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 spec, the, the, the this expression for the probabilities of of, of the quasi stretch distribution. These probabilities the, the, we we can put it as a radio of two of two of two expected value of 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 of, of, of some quantities. And this is, and the, the explanation for this is 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 is, 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 is only result from from this from this uh, 
from this uh, equalities that if we are surviving at time n and we are at time n at some maximization uh, uh, partition delta prime, it would mean that I have entered to delta prime at some time g and remain there. And so we obtain that this has this shape, but if one have entered to delta prime at some time g, it means that we have remained in, 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 in a set having a, 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 having a, pro, a loop probability smaller than eta. And so we, we, we can bound it by, 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 by some geometric uh, expression. So this, this sum, uh, so this sum uh, converges to the, to the finite, to this finite sum that is what we spe was, uh, was part of our statement of in, 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 the, in the theorem. And so this give the quasi station distribution and, and, and this give all the, all the, the, all the, all the, all the previous proposition. And so the, the, the other, the other uh, element for, for, for our, for the, for the final result, it is this one, it is a, a, a radio limit relation. That is to say this, uh, before we were starting from the, from the, from the trivial partition, and what happens if one starts from some partition delta and we study the limit of not being absorbed, well, it converges to the mean expected value of, of this, of the same time of quantities, but the first one is starting from delta and the other starting from the trivial partition, okay? Always this means we are starting from the trivial partition. And so we, this as happens in, in, in all, in all the, in, 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 in all these, in, in many frameworks, okay? This, this vector is constituted, this vector uh, that we call it phi delta, this vector starting from delta, this constituted the right eigenvector you know, of the, of the, of the transition kernel given by uh, the, among the partitions that are not, are not uh, in, that are different from the finest partition, from the limit one. And so this, this will be a right vector with eigenvalue uh, eta. This is the, this, can, this is easily shown. And, 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 and what is, to my view, the, the most important thing uh, in this very, very restrictive framework that is a finite framework, and we are not a study uh, limits, but the, the, the thing that will allow to make some, some limit that will have a, a, a sense for recombination, it is, it is this result. Uh, we will, we will consider the chain, the, the limit, the chain such that it is for people working in, in that have worked in in in, in, in quasi station distribution. Know that many times one consider this type, this chain. It is the chain of uh, of never being absorbed, never in the for the whole for the whole time. So we consider this chain, the chain of never being absorbed, starting from some delta zero. This will have a, a, mark, a transition kernel that have this shape. It is eta minus one, the same probability of going to delta to delta prime, and they are weighted by the right uh, eigenvector. So phi delta prime divided by phi delta, where the phi were this, the limit, the radio limit, the, rel, the radio limit among the among, among the the quantity of never attaining the limit. And so what happens with the chains? The chain where we are avoiding the, the limit, the limit partition have as fixed point, all the points that belong to, to M. That is to say now, now the fixed, the new limit points are the point that has, that have the, 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 the that have the, the maximum loop uh, probability. And so, and for the other partitions different from, from this partition M, this class of partition M, that were those that were connected to, 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 
to the limit partition, but with a, 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 and the additional property of having the, the maximum probability of having a loop. So this will be, this will constitute the new limit partitions, okay? Now, uh, from some, when you start from some delta, you will go from some, from some initial point, you will go to one of these partition and you will stay forever there. So the, the, the limit partition are expanded in, in, in several partitions, okay? And uh, that is the proof, it is standard, so I, I will not give you. And so what, what do we have as, as, as phenomena? Once the chain hit a state in M, it remains there forever. And so we can apply the same technique to the Q chain with set of limit points M. And so they, this will have a new uh, geometric decay, okay, eta prime. And we can, we can consider again the same result. We can prove it similarly that we can occupy the same chain to, 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 to produce a new Q chain. And so we, we can product in some sense, uh, in, in, in this sense, we can product a, a, a whole cascade of, 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 of where, where we are, uh, where the, the tree is being, is, is being um, uh, where we are cutting first the limit after we are cutting the, the, the leaves, the leaves of the new, the tree after we are cutting the leaves. So we are making a procedure that uh, can be, uh, can guide in some sense what one must do when we pass, when we pass to uh, a, a, a contraction in, in the infinite case. But the, in some sense, this is, has for, it is very difficult to make it if one do not have a, a, a control of the set of cutting partitions D that were the, 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 the first, uh, the first uh, ingredient, the crucial ingredient. And this is a biological, is this, this must be a, a biological sense. And I have not found a, a literature about what, what is the shape of this kind of partitions. Uh, uh, finally, the question here, uh, as you see, the, the, the Markov chain, this finite Markov chain has, is, is totally, it's not redu irreducible. It is highly non-reducible, I would say. And we have a, a lot of coexistence distributions. That is to say, you, you can have many coexistence distributions. Each one, for each one of the, uh, for the, the first one is concentrated in set M, you can produce for one of the each one of the states, you can produce one consistent distribution, but also for all the beta that are connected to the to the limit chain, you can produce on this set, you can produce all consistent distribution. So you have here, you have many, many session distribution. And uh, uh, I, I want to finish with, with two observations. This, this correspond this, this the, all the result I have said correspond to a Markov chain with cycle with no cycles, and such that the Markov chain increases along the evolution. That is to say, when uh, uh, increases along the diagonal with evolution. That is to say, if we communicate from K to L, the probability of remaining in K of making a loop is, is is bigger for for the new point, and all the all the result we have we have I have shown is. Can be can be made in for this class of chain, and also that recently we have with uh, with with Ellen and, and and Alberti and later we have solved also the migration recombination equation. Uh, that is to say, where you have one has a population at different locations, and they are mixed in this way. There, there is there is a, a, a transportation from one population and immigration to one population from the other one. And after one reshuffles them with a recombination uh, mechanism, but it is the same for all the populations. So this, this kind of equation also can be, can be, can be solved in, in the sense I, I have given you before. Uh, finally, I, I must say that here at the, at the end of, the, of my talk, 
it lacks a, a, a photo, a photo of the 2002, the 2002 uh, School of Information Randomness, where is Jean, where is Jean there? And uh, I have found the photo, I, I sent it to Vincent, but we must restore it. I hope this can be done. Okay, many thanks to all of you. Are there questions? Amori? Hola, Servet. Hola, Amori. How are you? <laughs> bien, bien. <laughs> Everything's fine. Thank you. Even we, here in winter, okay, okay. <laughs> Better to be in winter these times. Uh, so, so I wanted to ask. It seems that there there is a, a hidden uh, Galton Watson tree uh, behind uh, behind the process Y N. So the 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 uh, the state of mu at at, uh, at time n can be seen as the uh, the genome of a, as of a randomly sampled individual, right? At some at some point yeah. in time, and yeah. if you look at uh, the parents of uh, the parents of this individual. Uh, it can have it can have uh, as many parents as uh, as as uh, as components as blocks in your partition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can uh, right. like move backwards in time this way. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a way of like uh, taking advantage of this picture for uh, for the quasi stationary yeah. and even maybe I, condition on the I, I don't know. I, yeah. Really, yeah. I don't know because uh, many thanks for your question. It is an important question because. Uh, uh, Ellen Back and, and she has she worked she obtained the first part is she obtains the 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 the, 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 re the representation by the Markov chain by studying gen genealogical trees so so they, they look where they come where the new individuals come from this is the this is the operation she uses and so after taking a limit some limit it appears the the, the equation so. Uh, but I don't know how to to to, to obtain it. I, I have obtained it with with the other evolution, with the forward evolution I have shown you. But I don't know how to how to prove it. But how to prove the the, the quasi stationary using the genealogical trees? Uh, but I am sure this can be done. And the other thing is that. Uh, for for studying population, one is very one. Would like to 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 see it as uh, as the population because here there is no the, the population is not there ha, ha, the dynamics on the population and uh, as I have said the, the the dynamic it has been the papers of of Kirsten uh, study this dynamic but it's highly nonlinear that it's very difficult uh, the, the studying this equation it is like studying the types is studying the types. In, in the limit with with the limit population it is really doing that but there are some hidden uh, branching uh, process but uh, when in the in the genealogical trees when you when you study where you come from which are your parents and who are the parents of my parents and this is effectively this another way of looking this many thanks was our questions no, maybe in the chat. No, no question. So let's thank Servet again. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we have a 30 minute break. Okay. <laughs>